Hello everybody and welcome back and right now let's see how we can implement our Kylinux ISO file into our VirtualBox. So make sure to open up your Oracle VirtualBox, I already have it opened right here and let me lower this window and as I said in the previous video you should not have these virtual machines right here so what we are going to do right now is let us create a new virtual machine. So in order to do that, you simply just click on this button right here, which says new. It will open up this small window, which will prompt you for the name of your virtual machine. Right here, you can simply just type Kali Linux. It will by default set some settings right here, which we do want to change. Uh, but before we do that, we want to go to the machine folder. And if you want to, you can simply just change the actual environment of your VirtualBox virtual machines. If you don't want to change it, you can simply just leave it like this. I will leave it like this. In the version, we do not want this version set by default. We want to go right here and go to the Debian Linux distribution right here. So you can either check right here 32-bit or 64-bit, depending on which Kali Linux uh, version you installed. If you install 32-bit, go right here with the Debian 32-bit. And if you install 64-bit, go with this one. Since I, since I installed 64-bit, I will just check Debian 64-bit and I will press here next. Now the next window that comes up is the memory size. So it asks us for the amount of RAM memory that we want to actually give to our virtual machine. So for example, if you have eight gigabytes of RAM memory on your main PC, you do not want to give more than four to your virtual machine because it might actually make your PC run slow. Therefore, there is really no point in giving your virtual machine six gigabytes if there are only two gigabytes left for your main PC. Since I have eight gigabytes of RAM memory on my main PC, I will allocate uh, three gigabytes of RAM for the Kali Linux virtual machine, which is more than enough. Now the recommended memory size is one gigabyte, but if you want it to run a little bit faster, you can set more. You can set either two, three, or basically however you want. If you, for example, have 16 gigabytes of RAM memory available, you can, for example, set four to your virtual machine. I will set right here three, and I will go on to the next. Now the next one is the hard disk. As it says right here, if you wish, you can add a virtual hard disk to the new machine. What this means is basically if we have a hard disk saved somewhere right here or wherever on your PC, you can simply just implement it right here and it will work. But since we don't have anything, we will create a virtual hard disk right now. So make sure to check this one right here and click on create. It will ask us which file type of hard disk we want. We want the VirtualBox disk image, click here next. And this options right here basically is how you should store the memory or the data on your hard disk. Dynamically allocated will actually go slower because it is allocating memory as you use it, but the fixed size will basically just tell your main PC that the, for example, let's say we want to set 40 gigabytes to be the size of our hard disk. If then, if we choose the fixed size option right here, it will pretend as those 40 gigabytes are already taken and therefore it will be a lot faster as it says right here a fixed size hard disk file may take longer to create on some systems but it is often faster to use but it doesn't really matter for us right now we're going to go with the dynamically allocated and right now uh, you choose the size of your hard disk for your virtual machine so if you have for example two terabytes of hard disk on your main PC, you can simply see how much free space you have and therefore you allocate the amount of space that you think is enough. Now, I would advise you not to go below 20 gigabytes. So right now I will simply just type here or put here 30 gigabytes because it might run a little bit slower if you just don't give it enough memory to install all of the packages that it needs. So 30 gigabytes should be more than enough. Of course, if you have more memory, you can simply just put here more memory. But since this, this, since this is only for the course uh, purposes, I will just leave it on 30 gigabytes. Click here on create. And now our Cal Linux machine is created. But before you actually are available to run it, you need to input the ISO file that we downloaded as an operating system to this machine. And how do we do that? Well, simply just select the machine that you created, go on to the settings, which is this yellow button right here. Under the storage, you will have this controller IDE. Click here on the 
actual uh, circle with a plus, it will ask you what, uh, whether you want to leave empty or choose disk. We want to choose disk. And right here, if you don't have the actual Cal Linux uh, ISO file specified in here, in this small window, you can simply just go to the add and find it wherever you saved it. So I saved it right here. You can simply just click here, open, select it right here, and it will be right here. Then this empty part right here, you can simply just right click and remove attachment, leaving us with only Cal Linux ISO file under the controller IDE. Once you finish that, click here on OK, and then you're available to run the virtual machine. You can click here on start, This will start up the installation process of Kali Linux. Uh, let us see whether this will open up. Okay, so here it is. We can lower this window as it says right here, VirtualBox 6.0 version. And the first thing that you will see is this menu right here. It prompts us with different options and the two options that we are interested in would be the install or graphical install. They are mostly the same, just graphical install looks a little bit better. But I will go with the install option because I'm pretty much used to it. Now, one more thing, you can't really navigate with your mouse once you're in a virtual machine right here. You can only navigate uh, with the arrows up and down uh, and different keyboard buttons. Now, of course, once you actually install the virtual machine, you will also be able to use the mouse. But in the installation process, just use your actual keyboard. Press enter on the install or on the graphical install. And right now, it should prompt us with the first question. Select any language you want right here. I will just simply go with the English. And then it will ask us for our location. I will simply just press your United States, as well as configuring your keyboard right here, which I will set to American English and press your enter. It will install a few different things. And now we're going to wait for new thing that it should prompt us in the installation process. It is loading some additional components as it says right here. Now this should not take too long. Okay, see, so it already finished. And right now, detecting on ATHO, which is our Ethernet interface, attempting IPv6 auto configuration, okay. And right here, it will ask us to configure the network. Basically, it is asking us for the host name. As it says right here, the host name is a single word that identifies your system to the network. If you don't know what your host name should be, consult your network administrator. Now, this isn't really too, too important for us, so we will just leave it on Kali and press tab button to navigate to the continue. And then once we are there, we can simply just press here enter. The next part that it asks us is the domain name. Now. As it says right here, the domain name is the part of your internet ad address to the right of your host name. Uh, we are simply just not really interested at this at all at the moment. So we will just leave it empty and go on to the continue. This part is really important. So this is the part where we actually set our root password. Now, for those of you who don't know what root is, basically the root is an administrator on Linux or should I say something like a super user or however you want to call it. Basically, in Windows, you have a user and an administrator, while in Linux, you have a user and a root account. The root account has all of the privileges and basically can do anything it wants. And right now, we're setting the password for the root account. So right here, let us navigate to the password right here and type the password can be, for example, test1234. You set anything you want. If you want to check it out, you can simply just go show password and clear. And once you are ready, you can simply just go and continue. It will ask you to re-enter the password. So just simply enter the same password you entered two seconds ago. Navigate to continue and press here enter. It's asking us to configure our clock. I will just simply go with the Eastern, press here enter. And I believe right now it should start actually installing the operating system. Let us see. Starting up the partitioner. Yeah, of course, we need to actually finish the partitioning before we can actually install. Now, as it says right here, the installer can guide you through partitioning a disk. If we guided partitioning, you will still have a chance later to review and customize the result. Now, uh, we have few partitioning methods right here from manual to guided using hard disk and set up encrypted virtual machine. 
uh, we are not interested in that at the moment. We do not need an encrypted virtual machine as we will really not have anything important on that virtual machine. Therefore, there is really no use to encrypt the hard disk. So we will just simply just go with the guided use entire disk, press here enter. It will ask you select this to partition. Since we only created one hard disk in the process of creation of virtual machine, which is in my case 30 gigabytes large, we will select that one, press here enter. And this part right here will ask what type of partitioning scheme you want to, as it says right here, all files in one partition recommended for new users. Since we are new users, uh, we are going to go with this one. We don't really want to bother with separating the home slash var slash TMP partitions. We are not really interested in that at the moment. So we'll simply just go all files in one partition. Press here, finish partitioning and write changes to disk. And it will ask you one more confirmation question. Write changes to disk. You want to press your tab, navigate to yes and press here yes. Right now it should continue installing our system or our operating system, as it says right here. Now, this might take some time. For example, it might take for 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, so after around 15 minutes of installing the actual virtual machine, we come to our first question during the installation, which is the configure the package manager. Now it says a network mirror can be used to supplement the software that is included on the CD-ROM. This may also make newer versions of software available. Now this is pretty much dependent of you. So you can either click yes or no. Let us just click yes right here. And the actual configure the, pra the package manager we are not interested in. So we're going to just leave blank or basically we're not going to type anything right here and click on continue. It will now continue with the installation, which should take a little bit less than the previous one. So it is configuring the APT right now, as it says right here, scanning the mirror. And I believe there should be uh, one or two more questions during the installation and then we're good to go. So it basically asks us, as it says right here, it seems that this is the new installation. It is the only operating system on this computer. If so, it should be safe to install the grub bootloader to the master boot record of your first hard drive. Now it gives us a warning that if the install fail to detect another operating system that is present on your computer, which we know that it isn't because we're running a virtual machine and this is the only operating system that we're installing, Therefore, we actually want to install the grub bootloader to the master boot record. So just press here, enter, and then enter device manually. This is the actual device for the bootloader installation. We want to navigate down to the slash dev slash SDA, press there, enter on your own hard drive. You do not want to go to the uh, enter device manually. We want to pick our own hard disk and press here, enter. It will finish up instantly grub bootloader, and therefore it will finish the installation. Now this will take a few seconds or minutes. Okay, so the installation has finished and it is right now uh, restarting our virtual machine. You will see in short time that our actual login screen will prompt up if we installed everything correctly. If it doesn't, make sure to post your error in the actual question section. I will be more than happy to actually answer your question. Whether it is some error that you encountered or whether it is something that you're interested in, feel free to post in the question section. Okay, so right here it is running some startup programs. So you will notice that it will not go full screen. Uh, it will stay this small square right here. And we will fix that in the next video. Just for now on, we want to make sure that everything works correctly and that we can run our virtual machine and log in into our desktop. So here is the login page right here in the username. The username for the Cal Linux virtual machine is root. Now, uh, for all of you, it will also be root that is set by default by the Kali Linux and the password is what you set during the installation. In my case, it is test one, two, three, four. In your case, it is basically the password that you set in the process of installation of Kali Linux. And right now, if everything works correctly, we should prompt, get prompted our own desktop. And then we will cut the tutorial and continue in the next one of making our Cal Linux machine full screen. Because this is not really something that you can work with. It is really small and uh, we can barely see anything as we can see right here. This is our desktop. And right now we know that our virtual machine is working correctly. Basically, that would be about it for the installation of Cal Linux. As I said before, we're going to make sure it is full screen in the next tutorial. So hope you enjoyed this one. And I hope I will see you in the next lecture. Bye.